In 1920, a small wooden hut was constructed at the Croydon Airport in London. This hut would be the first recorded instance of an air traffic control tower. It initially only provided basic air traffic, weather, and location information to the pilots, but as Croydon grew in size and technology advanced, so did Croydon's air traffic control system. Radio was used to communicate with pilots from the ground, which would allow air traffic controllers to relay information to pilots. Air traffic controllers would be responsible for helping pilots navigate, land, take off, and inform them about any problems they may encounter along their flight, including inclement weather. Before World War II and the invention of radar, air traffic controllers would be able to get bearings on incoming pilots by using radio transmitters installed on aircraft. These transmitters would beam out a radio signal that stations across the United Kingdom would be able to listen in to. Using machines and mathematical formulas, the bearing of an incoming aircraft could be found using the signal generated by these radio transmitters. Hello, Jim. Hello, Pullum. Your bearings, please. Rodon, 119 degrees. Lim, 168. Pullum, 183.5. Five miles east of Dungeness. Hello, Imperial H. Denmark. Croydon calling at 12.15. Your position, five miles east of Dungeness. Over. To determine wind conditions, balloons and wind stalks would be used at the airport to determine the speed and direction of wind. Air traffic controllers would also be in constant communication with meteorologists in order to collect we weather data from across the region. This information would be relayed to pilots in order to inform them about weather conditions along their routes. Croydon's early example would shape today what we call air traffic control, a necessary system in place that all commercial airports would come to use. An air traffic control system is compromised of air traffic controllers, sensors, and pilots, all working together to manage air traffic. Pilots are just as important of a part of this system as air traffic controllers themselves. Without pilots sharing information, an air traffic control system would not be able to fully operate. An air traffic control system's goal is to communicate with pilots in order to conduct a safe flight. They assist and organize pre-flight, departure, navigation, approach, and landing. The information and organization that an air traffic control system provides is extremely important. Pilots cannot fly safely without the information from an air traffic control system. The operation of an air traffic control system is a very complex process that requires a lot of manpower. Air traffic controllers operate from control towers to control the flow of air traffic. The controllers must watch aircraft constantly and prevent collisions by advising pilots to adjust course when needed. Ground control is responsible for the movements at the airport on the ground, outside takeoff and landing. This includes managing taxiways, inactive runways, holding areas, and other areas not in use by aircraft. Anyone moving around the airport should receive authorization from ground control before they do anything at all. This not only means pilots, but also airport supporting staff. Air control, or local control, is responsible for managing the active runways. They give takeoff or landing clearance to pilots directly, and manage runway traffic to make sure there are no collisions. Flight data and clearance delivery issues clearances to aircraft before they begin to taxi. Clearance usually also contains the details of the aircraft's route, weather conditions, and airport conditions. Clearance delivery does not issue takeoff clearance. That is the job of local control. They also work with radar centers and other parts of the ATC to ensure that there will be room to land by time an aircraft arrives. Flight data is also sometimes broadcasted automatically by the ATIS, a radio-based system that shares weather and airport conditions. Air traffic control incorporates several familiar technologies, using them all together to ensure pilot safety. 
This includes information from radio communications, radar stations, the global positioning system, and weather stations. Weather data is obtained by weather stations across the world. This data is gathered by air traffic control and then relayed to the pilot through the air traffic control system. Radio is mainly used to communicate with pilots, but there are several different uses for radio technology in the air traffic control system. Communications between different sections of air traffic control and pilots are usually broken up into multiple radio frequencies. There are several different bands in use for different duties. This may include bands for approach control, the control tower, ground control, clearance delivery, or current airport conditions. The bands used in the number of different bands may vary from airport to airport. Radio can also be used to guide aircraft using radio navigation beacons. These beacons transmit a directional radio signal that pilots can hone in on and follow to their destination. With the popularization of GPS systems, these beacons aren't used as frequently anymore. Airport Surveillance Radar is the system responsible for detecting and tracking the presence of aircraft within the radius of the radar station. This radius varies based on the size of the radar station and typically reaches out to 30 to 50 miles and up to an altitude of 10,000 feet. ASR uses a primary and secondary surveillance radar system. These two different radar systems work in tandem to gather separate information. The primary system tracks incoming aircraft using bounce back. This works the same way as radar stations first used during World War II for detecting enemy aircraft. Typical primary radar systems operate at a frequency of 2.7 to 2.9 gigahertz and at an average power of 2.1 kilowatts with a peak effective power of 25 kilowatts. This is significantly more powerful than the secondary system as detecting aircraft through radar typically requires a much stronger signal to be effective at long distances. Using this gathered information, the primary system can track the distance of the aircraft and which direction it's flying. The secondary system is responsible for interrogating transponders and aircraft and is much less powerful. It is typically located on top of the primary radar Aircraft carry radar transponders that transmit a signal back to the secondary antenna after being interrogated. This signal contains the aircraft's identification, barometric altitude, and emergency status code. The secondary system and transponders working together are known as the Air Traffic Control Radar Beacon System. The information obtained from the secondary system is paired with the location information from the primary system and sent to a radar screen. On the radar screen, aircraft are displayed with information from both systems, giving comprehensive location and identification information. This lets a radar operator track what's going on in the airspace and coordinate with air traffic controllers. Army 20190, Karen's final controller, how do you hear me? Karen's final Army 20190, loud and clear. Your missed approach procedure is climb and maintain 1500, fly heading 060, contact Karen's GCA on 225.5. Roger. GPS is another technology that has brought significant change to how the air traffic control system operates. It has not necessarily changed the system itself very much, but has given pilots more information without needing to communicate with the air traffic control system. In remote locations where airports may have underdeveloped air traffic control systems, GPS is extremely helpful for making landing approaches. GPS has also made navigation more simple and efficient. Pilots are able to stay on course easier and make adjustments in order to react to other aircraft tracked on some GPS systems. GPS can even be used to find downed aircraft through their GPS transmitters. Since GPS works worldwide, it can be used even when outside of radar or radio range, making it extremely useful in searching and rescuing downed pilots. GPS can also be used in things like the Enhanced Ground Proximity Warning System. 
a system used to help avoid crashes that has already proven itself to be quite effective. GPS can be used on nearly any aircraft, including very small ones that lack many flight systems found on larger aircraft. These smaller aircraft can benefit more from having a GPS system by using it for multiple calculations instead of having to install more systems on the aircraft. GPS has given pilots the ability to make their own decisions when flying, but it should not be solely relied on for navigation and especially not for landing approaches. The air traffic control system is one of the most important developments in the history of travel. Without it, landing and departure from airports would be complete chaos. It's important that all the components of the system work together, including the people involved in the system, as a single mistake made anywhere in the air traffic control system could result in death. Luckily, the air traffic control system is being constantly improved with new technology and talent, and the chances of anything getting messed up decreases as technology progresses. Thank you for watching my video, and have a safe flight.